So going back to how you learnt the craft, what was, how did you develop your methodology? How did that happen? Um, the first editor I assisted was a guy called Richard Perfit, and I worked with him uh, from the beginning in documentaries. And he was a very precise, uh, 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 had a very precise manner of working, which involved, um, for example, he said, if an editor asks you to do something uh, and you haven't got anything to write with, write on anything that comes to hand because you must, ne must never disturb the editor's concentration. So, for example, he said, if they say something, just grab a china graph, write it onto a table, you know, and don't ask them again because they're thinking a lot about the cut and you mustn't disturb them. So I tend to make lists. I tend to write things down and then uh, I actually then tick them off once I've done them. If, if we're talking, if a director and I are talking, I'll, I'll write notes in an invisible manner. I'll just keep writing notes very, very fast. Uh, and then I'll actually look again at them when I'm going through the notes uh, to actually follow them through and then I tick them off once I've done them so that's quite a sort of it sounds laborious but it isn't at all it's quite freeing and you don't forget anything anyone says because you've actually made a tiny note about it I encourage my assistants to do that and I encourage train training editors uh, to, and that to do includes that. viewing when you're viewing the rushes when, for I'm, instance. when I'm watching the rushes I make notes all the time uh, sometimes it's a mental note but usually it's a written one like a certain take might have a light in the eye or a certain performance on a line uh, and I, I, I find that very important because watching the, the rushes is such an important yes. uh, stage so I, I would always watch them twice at least before deciding which way to go with the cut. Um, when I worked with Bill Diver on Distant Voices Still Lives and The Dressmaker uh, he said always put everything into your first cut uh, he was a moviola editor, so a different kind of decision making was involved on moviola editing. But uh, he, he, he also said the editor's cut, you're never going to get that opportunity again because the director will be with you quite a lot after the shoot is finished. So put everything into making the first cut, either the editor's cut. What, what do you mean by put everything in? What, what, he, what, what I mean is make the story work as well as you can. Try and and find the best take for every performance. You know, try to find find the best take, the best angle, and try and make your first cut as close as possible to the way it should be in the final film. Not to say you want to overcut it, but try and make the story work as best you can. Uh, don't leave a stone unturned. In other right. words, don't be rough. Don't just leave it roughly in there and wait for the director to come and say, "I want this title," or "I want to be on." somebody for this uh, this line or so. You just try and make your mark on the material, get yeah. to know the material as, as, a, as a good way yes. to, to producing a good cut that the director can then look at and respond to. So to be clear, are we yes. talking about not doing a rough cut? We're talking about not doing a rough cut. I don't really think about rough cut. I don't use that terminology. I use uh, first cut. I don't use the word assembly because I find it demeaning uh, and vague. Uh, so I say first cut, second cut, third cut. Right. Uh, and right. then director's cut is what one uh, approaches uh, right. with the director.